Oh, what's up everybody? I'm Matt Gary, and on this episode of Coding with the Force, I'm gonna show you how to use the local development server CLI plugin to do your Lightning Web Component development. All right, guys, so just like with every other video I make, I first wanna tell you why you would care to do the thing that I am showing you. <laughs> how to do. Um, more or less, the local development server makes it considerably faster to build out your Lightning Web Components. Um, you can't build in all the features. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's some limitations, at least as of today, with the local development server. So for instance, you know, if you're putting this in a Lightning app page and you want to get the record ID or um, you know, the object API name or something like that. Uh, you can't do that. You can't demo that functionality um, in its entirety anyway within the local development server. But um, the speed benefits you gain from, you know, creating proof of concepts or prototypes for your uh, LWCs using the local dev server is well worth um, the, the small drawbacks it has. So, um, that's really the big thing. This will make it so much faster for you to develop your Lightning Web Components in, in the vast majority of cases. So, um, you know, as soon as you save a Lightning Web Component, you're going to see that um, Lightning Web Component get refreshed and updated in your local development server, which, you know, sometimes um, it can take a very long time to reload pages in Salesforce, <laughs> uh, especially in Lightning. So. Sorry, it's still still slow. Anyway, we'll move past that. So um, more or less, the major benefit here is you're going to save a lot of time. You're going to be able to prototype things way faster. So um, it's worth the couple minutes here it takes to set it up. Um, all right, so what do we need to set up this uh, local development server? The first thing that you're going to need is the Salesforce CLI. Um, you'll need this for pretty much anything uh, that's worthwhile these days uh, for Salesforce development. So if you don't have that installed, do make sure to install it. Uh, the second thing that you'll want to do is either install Visual Studio Code and the um, Salesforce extensions for it, or IntelliJ and Illuminated Cloud 2. Either one will work, it doesn't matter at all. I have videos for both of them, so if you want to make a decision now and you're not sure about which one you'd like to use, go check them out. Um, all right, so now that we've got one of those two IDEs installed, Visual Studio Code or Illuminated Cloud, and we've got the Salesforce CLI done, then the next thing we'll need to do is set up an SFDX project. Um, if you've never done that, uh, the uh, Visual Studio Code video that I mentioned earlier shows you how to do that. I'm not going to go over it again in here. It's pretty simple. It'll only take you about 10 minutes of your time. If you're interested and you, you don't know, um, please do make sure to check out that video and I'll put it in the uh, link in the description. So once you've set up a project um, within uh, either IDE that you've chosen, then um, and you've installed the Salesforce CLI and all the other stuff we just went over, then um, we basically just need to run a plugin. Um, and before we do that, there is something that I want to point out. <clears throat> I'll bring it over here. So you can see, I'll zoom in here to make it super clear. On the local development server setup instructions that Salesforce actually provides to you, it tells you that you have to have your developer hub enabled in your org. I just want to point out that this actually isn't true. Um, you don't need this enabled, and I'm going to show you uh, because the, the project that I have set up right now does not have the developer hub enabled in it, but I'm still able to use the local development server. I'm not sure why this requirement is here, but in the instance that you are in an org where you don't get to make the calls and they don't have dev hub enabled, um, chances are you're probably not developing Lightning Web Components, but if you are, 
um, and for some reason they have that turned off and they don't want to turn it on, um, then don't freak out. You can still use the, the local development server, which I'll show you here in just a second. So um, once you've got this open, uh, or once you've got your project set up in Visual Studio Code, um, you're going to come over here to the terminal within Visual Studio Code, and we're going to run one command that installs the plugin for our um, LWC, or sorry, local development server. You can see that they are named for it as LWC Dev Server, because that's more or less what it is. So you'll run that plugin command, and it's going to basically install that plugin for the uh, LWC Dev Server. So you can see it doing that right now, um, which I'll pull this up just in case my face is in the way, which, you know, if you like my face, that's very kind of you. But otherwise, uh, it's not as important as all this stuff that's happening. Um, all right, so everything's about to finish up here. And you can see that it did install the dev server plugin. And you're good to go. Uh, if this is the first time installing it, you might get asked a yes or no question as to whether or not you'd like to install this package because it doesn't have a digital signature. Um, I can't remember if that's a thing for this one, but most SFDX plug or sorry, sorry, Salesforce CLI plugins have that problem. Just hit yes. This is a Salesforce made um, plugin, so there's not anything to worry about really. Okay, so we have installed that plugin, which is great. I will show you two ways to do this, um, just so that uh, you know. If you're using this in not Visual Studio Code, you can still do it. Um, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So if you're in Visual Studio Code, all you have to do is hit Control-Shift-P after you've installed that, and you can run this command, sfdx open local dev server. So the uh, command palette basically gives you the option to just um, open the local development server. And what this command will do is it'll start the dev server, and then it'll automatically open the dev server in another window. Um, if you don't have this, you can, uh, you know, and you're using uh, IntelliJ or some other IDE, um, then you can run this command, sfdx force lightning start, and I will definitely bring this up because I don't think you can see that. So sfdx force lightning start is the command that you would want to run in any other uh, CLI. So you go on ahead and do that. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to start up a local development server. And here in just a minute, it's basically going to tell me that it successfully did that. And you can see that it set it up on this port. And I think we're just about done here. Maybe if it takes much longer, I'll cut it so you don't have to listen to me talk for no reason. Um, maybe. Yeah, I'll be back soon. Bye. All right, so I'm back. And um, actually, this was already done. And it's just because I haven't looked at this terminal window in a long time when I've opened up the uh, a Lightning, uh, or sorry, the uh, local development server. I almost always just run the command palette command and let it do its thing. And I'm not involved or care about it at all. That being said, uh, let me show you what you do next. So if you've done, uh, if you're in a, uh, Illuminated Cloud or, or another IDE that's, that doesn't have the command palette available to you like uh, Visual Studio Code does, then you would run this command like we have just ran, and it's going to um, set up your server on this localhost 333. Uh, so basically port 333 on your, your uh, machine. And this is what we end up with. So you're going to have this uh, local development server set up, and it's going to show you all of the Lightning Web Components within your project that we were just looking at. So if we, you know, if we go back over here and we take a look at my Lightning Web Components, you'll see that all of these Lightning Web Components are uh, present here within, uh, you know, uh, available for selection here. So if I click on one of these, um, you can see it, you know, sets it up. This is, I've barely done any development on this random idea I had, but um, basically, it allows you to um, 
demo what the functionality of your lightning web component would be um, so it's pretty cool the other thing is you know if I come over here to this uh, org declutterer and say I would like to update it real quick which oh this is a uh, my snaps not working let me put this side by side and uh, so if I want to make one quick update to my org declutterer here um, and we'll just say I want this to say this is the record count and I save this then this is going to automatically reload as soon as I save it and you'll see that uh, represented here um, and you can see that this is considerably faster right than um, you know your typical reload in uh, within Salesforce itself so it really does speed up your workflow um, you don't have to come back over here and reload as soon as you save it's gonna automatically update that blah 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 etc etc okay so there's one more thing that I want to show you guys um, I cut the video a little short last time because I forgot about this so I'm bringing it back and we'll go over this one last thing that I think could be important for at least a handful of people out there um, so I'm bringing this up for two reasons number one uh, it is very possible that some people already have things running on port 3333 so you might want to set it to a different port and another reason that I want to bring it up is because the documentation for this is not super wrong but it's still technically a little wrong <laughs> So it can be confusing if you set this up and you're like, oh, I followed the directions that Salesforce gave me, but it's not working. So uh, I'll show you what I mean um, real quick for people that are involved with JSON a lot. You'll notice that there's, you know, the, there's at least one thing that's not super consistent with how JSON is set up, and that's that these are not in quotes. So let me just show you. If you did this the way that uh, this uh, config file to change your port, the way that they have here, it's not going to work. Um, but uh, we can easily fix that problem. So let's just set this up. If you want different configuration for your local development server, you actually have a handful of options. Um, that didn't create it where I wanted it to. There we go. Okay, so you have to put this file in the root of your project. So at the top level, don't put it within another folder. Um, but basically all you're making here is a local dev server, right? Yep, dot config dot JSON file. So basically you're creating a local dev server configuration file in JSON format. Okay, so if you did this how Salesforce shows you anyway, and you just say port 3333, um, which you'll notice even the IDE is telling you it must be double quoted. So if you're using an IDE to set this up, it's going to be fine. But if you did it that way and you click uh, and you do uh, open local dev server, um, well, if your dev server is not already running, like I guess mine might be, um, let me just stop it. There we go. So if you had it set up like that and you opened your local dev server, you're going to notice a handful. Of, well, you're going to notice one command in particular uh, here that fails. Loading JSON failed with an unexpected token P in JSON at position 7. So very easy to resolve, as you can see. Um, even though it's not in the documentation, all you have to do is put port in double quotes and then we can change this to say go on port 5656 or something and <clears throat> if we stop our dev server um, by the way this is what I'm doing here just command palette commands um, the command palette can be reached using control shift P in um, Visual Studio Code that is and if we open the local dev development server now whoa, um, <clears throat> we'll see that we don't get that error this time that we had last time uh, and it opened the local host on 5656 which 
we can see over here as well. So that's pretty cool. You can change that along with a handful of other things like uh, the namespace that your app is running in, um, the, the, the source directory for your Lightning Web Components, static resources, custom labels, uh, things along those lines. So you can change a handful of things about the local development server, but in my opinion, the most useful one is the port change because some people won't want it running on 3.3.3.3. All right, that is it for today, guys. Um, hopefully this helps somebody out there, helps you understand why you use the local development server, along with other things. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. I try to do at least one of these every week. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.